time to do this, you know. Maybe we should put him in charge of civil rights. <laughs> and that's what they did, you know, they put him in charge of civil rights. And he really did stand up for civil rights. You know, Bill was a fighter. I mean, you have to give Bill a lot of credit, you know. I was proud of him a lot of times when he was doing my courses and he was really an exemplary, he was an example of what I taught my students, you know, to confront, to create confront, you know, like Dr. Phil does. I like Dr. Phil, you know, he, he's carried on my, he's carried on the good work, you know. <laughs> he has. You got to give him a lot of credit too. And so anyway, um, after this thing broke, uh, a whole bunch of guys came over and, you know, they were slapping Bill on the back. Hey, Bill, great going, you know, man, you really said it. And not a single person came over to him and said, okay, let's wipe HIV off the map. Not a single person. You know, and you know, there had to be like hundreds of those guys were positive and were on the cocktail. You know that. And, and actually, they're, you know, yeah, it was 1996. You know, I mean, a lot of those guys were on the cocktail and not a one came over. I am looking for the person who will end the HIV epidemic. So if you bump into her <laughs> or happen to have been her college roommate or whatever, or his college roommate, tell him to give me a call, okay? <laughs> and we'll do it, you know. <laughs> I am looking for that person. First, they'll have to become somebody who cures things, because obviously they're not, or they would have ended the epidemic, right? <laughs> there wouldn't be any epidemic if somebody who came along who could, you know, and who was, you know, who was the, the person, you know. Uh, anyway, whatever. Um, so we'll get him, tell him to get in touch with me. Anyway, okay, so the guy walked over to, this guy, the other guy came over to Bill, and this guy said, help me. He said, I'm dying. And he just wasn't HIV positive. He had AIDS. He had had his second pneumonia. His doctor told him one more pneumonia and you're out of here. His name was Chuck Laspata. And he said, please, he said, please help me. He said, I'm, I'm, I'm going to die. And Bill said, okay. And he got him on the phone with me. <laughs> so call Byard. You know? <laughs> I think Bill called me also. He said, I told this guy to call you and whatever. The, you know, whatever. But anyway, so I, when the guy, when Chuck called, I said, come over. I, but this time I said, come for the weekend. <laughs> See, because I realized, like, this guy's dying. I gotta, I better, I gotta, I better make sure that we actually, I mean, I didn't even know, like, he could have developed his, he could have showed up with pneumonia, you know, and I realized, I said, but whatever he's got, when he comes here, we are curing it. I don't care what it is. At this point, I had become somebody who cures things. <laughs> that was it. See, you know, Bill has had, I have to say about Bill, that Bill has had this effect on me throughout my life. This was not the only time where he created a major transformation in my life. And this was one of them. He, Bill was, Bill is, I would say, that he is one of the people, at least, who is responsible for me making this transformation because he threw this responsibility at me, you know, for him being a ditz, for one thing, and also for, you know, Chuck. And so, and plus he stood up and he set an example. And he, he, he was with me I mean, he was fighting alongside me in, in some way, in his way, you know. Maybe he could have done more, but, you know, whatever he could do, whatever he saw he could do, at least he tried to do. And so, okay, so, Ch so Chuck came over, and he came Thursday, and, I, and he was, you know, not show, he was only had this, you know, uh, he just looked real waxy, okay, let's put it that way. And I said, uh, okay. You know, we're going to cure it tomorrow morning. We'll go to the running track. We'll, we'll do what I figured I'd do what I did with Bill. And I said, but tonight I said we should go shopping because we got to get food for the, you know, was, he, got to, he got there around 6, I guess. And I said, we go, we go out together. We'll get, we buy food for the weekend. So we went to BJ's Price Club, right? And we're pushing a shopping cart around, you know. He's helping me shop, you know. And, and I'm, you know, throwing things in the cart. And, and 
all of a sudden I just couldn't hold back anymore and I said, okay, we're gonna cure this right now. <laughs> we were walking away from the f f food and produce area. I'll, I'll never forget it, you know. And I said, let's just, let's just cure it right now. And I, I had him start taking it out. And he, uh, like about, after he did like the second or third removal, he went like, he said, I'm getting dizzy. And I went, uh-oh, <laughs> he's on a concrete floor, right? <laughs> so, so I said, oh, wait a minute. I, I, didn't, I didn't expect this. Bill didn't get dizzy. None of us ever, nobody had ever gotten dizzy on me before. And then he started, and I, and I had him keep doing it. He started telling me he was nauseated and he was seeing double. And I, and I took him off the aisle. I said, come here. We went into the side aisle and I sat him down on something. And I said, just keep going. I was scared then too. I, I got a little scared then, but I just said, okay, I figured because uh, some nutritionist I knew mentioned something they called die off. And I went, so see what happened was at first I got a little scared, but then I realized I said, he's killing this thing. That's what this is. It's dying off, you know? It's exactly what this guy talked about. I remembered this. So I said, just keep going. Take it out, keep taking it out. And see, when the nutrition world, of course, it takes weeks or months or whatever for something to die off. But in this case, it took like, you know, 10 minutes or whatever, and he was fine. All of a sudden, he was fine. Everything, all that passed. And he was in this really, really profound version of the calm, clear place that you see Molly going to, right? Well, it was, in his case, he was zonked. <laughs> it wasn't like Molly, you know, where she's just feeling relaxed. I mean, he was, whoa, <laughs> I've been there, you know. <laughs> I felt, I have experienced that many times, actually. And uh, like when you really cure something, you know, that's major. When you cure something that's major, that's what happens. And so, you know. That, that was uh, his story, you know, he, Chuck never got another pneumonia, he never had any other problem, I guess, he, I mean, he may have had other problems, but basically, he, he talked to Greg a couple of years later, and he was fine, you know, uh, so, that's it. Um, people cure things, you know, the question is, who's going to turn into the people who are, who are somebody? Who cures things? It's a, it's a beingness. You know, it's where you, <clears throat> you know, you don't get sick. You win. <laughs> you don't get sick. You win. You know, that's it, baby. 